We're going to bring in two other people. Jay Margolis formerly ran brands such as Tommy Hilfiger, Reebok, Liz Claiborne. He now sits on the board of Boston Beer, also Godiva Chocolates. He is a Bloomberg contributing editor. Joining us from Watermill, New York this morning. Also, J.P. Morgan chief economist Mike Feroli still with us here on the line. Mike, thanks for staying with us. Jay, glad to have you as always on. What do you make of uh, some of the stats that Heath uh, just gave us? Is it going to be a great year when we look back for the U.S. consumer or weak? Well, I, I think July is actually a crucial month in that it is, as Heath has said, getting rid of old inventory and moving on to new. But it's important that people have shown up. Traffic seems to be good. I think numbers are going to be good, and it's getting rid of the old. The promotion is what drove it, but imagine if they didn't show up and you still carry that inventory into the fall season. That would be a bigger problem. Uh, we have to also look at, though, e late Easter into uh, hopefully May and June. It had not been that great at retail. Uh, those stuck with a lot of inventory. It's interesting. The Zoomies number would seem low, and yet I think it was they ran out of goods. But with, with the example of Hot Topic, still had a lot to sell. So you have to judge some of those in different ways. But it is a key month. Jay, I have a question. Why do we? Why are we seeing this discrepancy between discount retailers and high-end retailers? Are you feeling that a lot of these uh, middle-range retailers aren't going to report very high same-store sales numbers for July? No, I think they are actually going to do okay for July. Again, it's all based on promotion, but Saks Fifth Avenue has to promote. Nordstrom's has their one-day sale early in the season, which drives some good comps for, uh, for this time period. I think that uh, the high end is spending more. Jobs obviously have not affected them as much. And I keep thinking in that consumer sentiment, which I know we're going to talk about, the uncertainty of what's gone on the last month or so, I think has affected consumers. We're best when we know one way or the other, bad or good. This was like we're all talking about what's going to happen happen and that's not good. So uh, I think the numbers are going to look good and I think going forward it's all going to be about back to school and newness and and what how that consumer responds to that. Uh, Jay, Inflation that is my will be the only other thing. I want to bring in Mike Feroli to talk about the consumer sentiment. Mike, we know the consumer spending dropped unexpectedly. We know the consumer sentiment measured by the U University of Michigan is dropping. Uh, and and look at some of the stocks. Target, Sears, JCPenney, Home Depot, Lowe's, The Gap, Best Buy, Staples, all trading down. Isn't the stock market discounting uh, a much gloomier future than perhaps we just heard from Jay? Well, I don't think one good month in July means that, uh, you know, the consumer is roaring back. After all, we've seen real consumer spending down three months in a row through June, which is highly unusual in an expansion. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of, uh, you know, a pickup for a month or two. But I don't think that necessarily means that the consumer is, uh, like I said, roaring back. Uh, all right. So, um Jay, sorry to bring you back in here. Do you see that split as well between high end and low end? Uh, no, not, not, it's too soon to tell that. I think, as, as Hitha said, it's getting rid of goods at this point, and it's more what is going to happen in August will be the crucial month. I think Mike's making a good point. I mean, it, May and June were just okay. I mean, they looked like they got rid of goods, they did business. Uh, retail was just, you know, not humming along. The question now will be, after getting rid of all these promotions, how does it turn around? I, I don't see a big, I think the low end is obviously not going to be as positive as the higher end, uh, Deidre. There is more going on in the higher end. Jay, we brought you back to talk about Kraft. It's splitting up its business into two. You're a brand expert. So is this a wise move from a market? marketing perspective from a branding perspective? I, th I think it's a great move, actually, a uh, big move, a uh, big risk as well for Irene in that she's recognizing the power of the Cadbury brand in emerging countries and in the rest of the world and the difference between grocery channel and, uh, and the whole snack channel in terms of business. I think they are very different businesses. I think Cadbury can maximize different craft brands in distribution therein. And obviously, you know, the craft brand is, a, is more of a, store, uh, a, a grocery store brand. I think that uh, she had to do this. I mean, she paid a lot of money for Cadbury. It's a way of really, from a distribution and product focus point of view, Cadbury would know the snack business better, would be able to take some of those brands and move them into that category. So I think while it's a risky move in terms of disruption of distribution, it seems like you're playing to the power of each brand. Uh, Jay, the one thing Irene Rosenfeld clearly wants to accomplish here is to earn the right valuation for both of these businesses. Is that going to work? Are investors going to pay a premium for the growth business, Cadbury, and also reward Rosenfeld 
for the margins and the cash flow that she says the North American grocery business can generate distinct from what you see in the snacks business? I think you hit it dead on, Eric. They're both two different things. One would be a growth play in terms of Cadbury, and you have to hope that Kraft can keep putting out products for the grocery channel with not having to play in snack does it give them more time to innovate more to put new products to market to really own grocery the way they hope they can but i agree with you one's one's obviously more cash rich and one's more on the growth side Two jay what paths. about irene rosenfeld's brand she took some very public and unusual criticism from warren buffett he outright called the purchase of cadbury dumb she held her ground but what do you make of her brand as a ceo uh, this is the big bet, right? So she's basically saying to all those people that may have doubted her, hey, I had this vision for Cadbury having an amazing distribution power worldwide, that it is going to emerging countries. I could separate some of my brands and maximize those. If she could make this happen, and Eric, to your point, if she can make both, both good stock plays, then she will have validated her brand. All right, Jay, good of you to join us. Jay Margolis Thank from you. Watermill, New York.